NQTT is currently the most popular messaging protocol in IoT. We can even say that it is the standard protocol for data transmission in IoT. Of course, NQTT is not limited to this. It is also widely used in scenarios such as Insta chat and message push of mobile app. If you have just heard about NQTT and are wondering what it is and whether it can meet your needs, or if you are using NQTT and want to learn more, then welcome to the free NQTT training course offered by EMQ University. The course is divided into two parts, basics and advanced. At the end of each part, we provide a simple quiz for you to assess your understanding of NQTT. After successfully completing all the quizzes, you will receive a free ENQ certification. Now let's get started. Maybe you have heard that NQTT is an acronym for Message Queue Telemetry Transport Elsewhere. But in fact, this statement is wrong. NQTT used to be called MQ Telemetry Transport. So many people mistakenly think that NQ is the abbreviation of Message Queue. But NQTT has nothing to do with message queues. So the OASIS committee standardized this, and now NQTT is just NQTT. It doesn't stand for anything anymore. Back to the protocol itself, NQTT is a very simple and lightweight messaging protocol based on the published subscribe model, which requires very little resources to implement and can run well on microcontrollers such as ESP8266. As a binary protocol, the message of NQTT is at least two bytes. Through the QoS mechanism, NQTT can also ensure the reliable arrival of messages so it is also very friendly to low bandwidth and unreliable network environments. Thanks to these features, NQTT has been widely used in various industries related to IoT, including industrial manufacturing, Internet of Vehicles, smart homes, energy and electricity, transportation and logistics, and more. So far, NQTT has three available protocol versions. They are 3.1, 3.1.1, and 5.0. You may be wondering why there aren't no earlier versions. The initial version of NQTT was designed by IBM and used only internally. When IBM made the NQTT protocol publicly available, it was already at version 3.1. The following two versions were revised under the auspices of the OASIS Technical Committee and became OASIS standards. This means there are plenty of libraries and tools available that follow these standards. The two main popular versions of NQTT currently are 3.1.1 and 5.0, with 3.1 being used only by some older devices that have not migrated yet. NQTT 5.0 was released in 2019 and is the most significant protocol upgrade since its initial release. While maintaining backward compatibility, it solves several issues found in the old version and introduces many powerful new features. This course also mainly focuses on NQTT 5.0. If there is something different between 3.1.1 and 5.0, we will explain it in particular. Before further studying NQTT, we need to understand the following key concepts. Firstly, there is the concept of publishing and subscribing. In NQTT, the sender and receiver of a message do not establish a direct connection to send and receive messages. Instead, they both connect to a server. The sender publishes the message to the server, and the server then forwards the message to the receiver. But when we have multiple senders and multiple receivers, each with their own desired messages to send and receive, there needs to be an identifier to help the server determine who should receive the message. In NQTT, this identifier is known as a topic. The receiver needs to subscribe to the topics they are interested in with the server, while the sender specifies a topic for each message. When the server receives the message, it will look for the receivers who subscribe to the corresponding topic and forwards the message to them. Usually, we refer to the receivers as subscribers and the senders as publishers. Of course, for the server, they are all clients. NQTT does not restrict clients to only publishing or subscribing. They can perform both operations simultaneously. NQTT clients can be microcontrollers such as Arduino, ESP or Raspberry Pi Pico, as well as application programs running on servers. NQTT servers can run on personal computers, various servers, or even on small single-board computers like Raspberry Pi. 
In addition to on-premises, there are also many MQTT cloud services available for selection. Taking EMQS as an example, you can choose to connect to public service directly, or you can use EMQS Cloud Serverless to create an MQTT service with a generous free quota for your personal use. If you want to use it for commercial purposes, you can also opt for EMQS Cloud's dedicated plan or BYOC plan. Since the main responsibility of the MQTT server is to forward all received messages to the appropriate subscribers, it acts as an intermediary between the clients. It proxies message forwarding for publishers and message reception for subscribers. The clients involved in data transmission may not even need to be aware of each other's existence. Therefore, the MQTT server is often referred to as a broker. MQTT topics are usually composed of multiple levels separated by slashes, somewhat resembling file paths. MQTT provides two types of topic wildcards, a single-level wildcard represented by a plus sign and a multi-level wildcard represented by a hashtag. If we want to subscribe to multiple topics with a similar structure at once, we can replace the corresponding topic levels with wildcards. For example, if we replace the content of the room level with the plus sign, we will subscribe to temperature messages from all rooms. Alternatively, if we replace all subsequent topic levels, including the room level, with a hashtag, we will subscribe to all sensor messages from all rooms. Due to the fact that IoT devices typically operate in unstable network environments, even though MQTT uses TCP as the underlying reliable protocol, it cannot guarantee message delivery to the destination. So MQTT provides three different levels of quality of service, each corresponding to different levels of message reliability to meet the requirements of different scenarios. QoS0 messages are sent once and are considered fire and forget, so they may be lost. QoS1 messages are repeatedly sent until an acknowledgement is received from the destination. This ensures message delivery to the destination, but may result in duplicate messages. QoS2 messages are also repeatedly sent until an acknowledgement is received from the destination. So in essence, QoS2 messages may still reach the destination multiple times. However, QoS2 introduces two additional handshakes, which enable the destination to deduplicate messages. This ultimately achieves exactly once delivery for QoS2. We can use QoS0 to publish less critical sensor readings, such as temperature and humidity, use QoS1 to publish status update messages, and use QoS2 to publish control commands, and so on. However, if that were the case, regardless of QoS1 or QoS2, messages would still not be guaranteed to reach their destination because any undelivered messages would be lost once the network connection is disrupted. So MQTT incorporates a session mechanism to ensure the semantics of QoS can be achieved. Both the client and the server store the unfinished message delivery in their respective session states, allowing the session state to persist even if the network connection is lost. This ensures message reliability is no longer dependent on the network. The server session state also stores the client's subscription information, so even if the network connection is interrupted, the server can continue to cache incoming messages for the client. Publishing and subscribing, topics, QoS, and sessions together constitute the core of MQTT. Built around this core, MQTT also provides features such as retained message, will message, shared subscription, and topic alias for IoT applications. In the upcoming lessons, we will delve deeper into these core concepts and advanced features.